Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to HP Discover, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. Check out hpdiscover.social for all the social streams, the video, the content, the special access. Patrick Osborne is here from HP, Cube alum, and he's joined by Bill Walker of 20th Century Fox. Gents, welcome to the Cube. Good to see thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having yeah, us. Thanks. So, Discover, and another Discover, you know, a little different this year, Patrick. We got Meg talking about business outcomes and absolutely Uber and Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> all the kinds of cool stuff. Consumption models are very different. I mean, obviously. You come out here every year for the past number of years, and you know it's all about the technology. I'm always wowed by the broad, you know, portfolio that we have. But really, at the end of the day, I think some of the messaging to the customers is, you know, we're here to help you solve your problems, and part of that is technology, part of it's services. So this high, sort of new high-level messaging around transformation and helping people achieve these business outcomes, I think it's a it's a good fresh start. Yeah. So, Bill, your business going through some interesting transformations. Yes, it Maybe is. talk about the high level, the drivers in your business, the, you know, you got new competitors, you got you got huge opportunities to, to, to go into this digital transformation, you've sort of early on in that. So maybe talk about some of the drivers in your business. Sure, absolutely. I think for us, you know, you, you really hit the nail on the head in the sense that it's really been about the physical, the digital transformation that the industry's, you know, kind of going through and also Fox is, and you know, on the infrastructure side and the IT side, we're trying to support that, you know, as best we can. And, you know, the name of the game lately has been speed to market, right? So we've partnered very tightly with HP on not only the hardware but the software side uh, in, you know, building out kind of a brand new digital supply chain environment uh, in Las Vegas, actually, right here, um, in one of our major data centers where we deliver all of our digital content to all of our providers, so EST, VOD providers like Amazon and iTunes, as well as you know, uh, major broadcasters. So you've got a facility out here that is essentially your, your cloud, is that yes. right? Or? Yes, we do. That, that's uh, our primary place where we deliver everything out of. It's, uh, it's a great, uh, we're using all HP uh, hardware and software there, so we're, we're customers across the board in the sense that we have uh, Blades, we've got 3PAR, we're using Store Once, as well as the HP software stack, like uh, Cloud System, on, on top of that. Is that so. part of, is part of uh, SuperNAP? Yes, yeah. yes, so yeah, we, we're, we're, facility. we're in SuperNAP, we love it, it's a great facility. Um, we moved there, well, I think a little over two years ago, and it's it's been an awesome experience. Has that made it into the, any of the movies? No. <laughs> <laughs> it must, right? I know. Well, they, they, it's impressive on the outside and the inside, right? Yeah. yeah. Remember, what was it? The old, remember the R R RoboCop? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They had that storage tech tape library way back then. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what's that? <laughs> they were great at Today, process. it's these impressive data centers. Like, yep. Amazing. So, so talk a little bit more about, the, you called it the digital supply chain. That's a powerful concept. What, what's behind that? Yeah, so, you know, we, we've obviously been in the physical supply chain business for a while uh, on the home entertainment side, so think DVDs, you know, Blu-rays, that kind of thing. But as we transition from people buying physical media to digital media, uh, a lot of the workflows and, you know, the supply chain aspect of it is still there, but now, now we're talking digital and not, not physical. So one of the things we've done at Fox is we've, you know, we've created a, what we call our digital supply chain. Um, so you've got, you know, Think not only you know things like content delivery in there, but you've got you know uh, watermarking, you know all the all the hallmarks of uh, what you would need in a you know in a digital environment to deliver that customer you know quality product from end to end yeah, and protect your IP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah security is a big one. So we'll talk about more about security, data protection. Maybe there's a general topic, and then let's get a, dig deeper if we could. For sure. I mean, security is obviously one one of our big drivers. I mean. Uh, obviously with everything that's been in the news lately, uh, we're, we're no different in the sense that we take it very, very seriously. Um, uh, you know, on the data protection front, like I said, we're big uh, Store Once customers. We love the product. Uh, we're using it heavily in our, uh, in our data center to protect our, our uh, content as well as our, uh, our data. So, yeah. How much, let's unpack that a little bit. What's, yeah. the, what's it look like? So you said a bunch of different you know, HP products. Can you can you help us understand how much you know 
storage, what kind of servers, what kind of apps? Paint a picture of your, your infrastructure for us. Sure. So we've got, um, you know, a, a lot, actually several racks um, uh, of, of gear. 3PAR, like I said, we're big 3PAR customers, so we have several racks of 3PAR that we're using kind of across the board. Uh, a, a lot on the database side, um, uh, you know, and, and high I/O scenarios. Uh, store once is kind of that uh, underpinning piece that that everything funnels back to that provides you know data deduplication, backup, um, archival, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, can we talk more about sort of your objectives of protecting data? I mean, obviously you don't want to lose it, but. There's you know, time to recover, there's data loss. How are you approaching that? Yep, so we, uh, we've we got you know our primary facility at Switch as well as a, a DR facility off-site. Uh, we're using store once, we're, we're, you know, we've got them in both places. We're doing replication uh, both ways uh, to ensure you know if we were to have a, uh, an event at one facility or we didn't have data available, we can quickly recover from the other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, RTO-wise, it's been a great success for us because we've moved from tape-based, you know, backup, and I, I know I really didn't mention that, but, you know, where we came from, you know, two, two and a half years ago, you know, from our LA and Chandler data centers, we had very, very heavy investment in tape infrastructure. And one of the things we, you know, decided when we went to this new, uh, you know, environment in Las Vegas is we wanted it to be completely tapeless, um, you know, to be flexible, right, in that environment. And, you know, we picked store once, we went all disk-based, and, uh, you know, RTO-wise, it's fantastic because, you know, as opposed to tape, if you have an event, if you happen to not have the tape on site, your RTO is dictated, you know, kind of by when you can get the tape back. With the- Fed exit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah, as fast as it can get here, right? With the store once, though, um, it's just there, we can, we can you know, bring it back in minutes. Uh, and in fact, we actually had a uh, kind of, not funny, but but uh, interesting incident happen early on where, you know, we kind of had an oops incident where somebody deleted a VM and, you know, with store once, we already had it, had it there and we were able to recover it in minutes and have it working again, which was not something we were able to do in, in previous iterations. So it's really RTO is your primary oh, driver yeah. as opposed to RPO. And yeah. Then, and Patrick, I'm sure you see it all over the board with, with, with customers, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, his whole environment is based on this digital content. That is the lifeblood of you know what they're doing as a business and what they're delivering you know to your customers. So that what we're seeing uh, in the data protection standpoint is that more apps are mission critical, right? They're moving from business critical to mission critical. The RTOs and RPOs are definitely more aggressive. Um, you know, month by month, quarter by quarter, people are moving from days to hours to minutes. Um, and we, you, they want to have more. They want to have access to more data that's near line and online, for the, so you can basically restore that right away. So we're seeing people architecting solutions for store ones where they'd want a couple weeks, maybe a couple months of, of data stored on that from a backup perspective. Now we're talking, having conversations about three to five years, seven years, ten years, right? So uh, definitely a paradigm shift in, in terms of data protection. I think the cloud's changed that a lot, too. Absolutely. Right? How so? Um, Let's talk about that a little bit. I, I think, you know, because the cloud, there's not really a concept of tape, per se. I mean, I know, uh, you know, some providers have a delayed, you know, uh, kind of recovery type mechanism. But I think, in general, people are assuming you've got the data on disk or, you know, available somewhere, and, and it's, you're able to recall it, right? And, you know, almost any cloud provider, I think, today is structured that way and has some kind of object storage where you can back up to, but it's an online situation, right? And I think that's kind of become the new the new standard for the expectation of, you know, being able to It's dumping it into an object store and yeah. being able to recover from that. Yeah, um, yeah well, like they say, backup is one thing, recovery is everything, so there's, there's a software component that has to go yeah. along with that. And what about tape? Are you using, I mean, you must be using tape uh, in your business, right? We, we do still have tape, but I, I think where it makes sense, um, we're trying to get rid of it. Um, you know, we, obviously there's a lot of physical nature with tape. Um, you know, for us, it's also manpower. You have to have, you know, there's a lot of manpower involved in just managing tape and whatnot. Um, so where we can, you know, especially strategically in our data centers, we're trying to get out, out of using tape and mm -hmm. using, you know, disk But for long-term archiving, long-term retention, with your digital assets, obviously you would tape for that. We, we definitely have scenarios at the studio where it's still used for sure.
Yeah, but not obviously not for backup, right? No, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, with my team, we're starting to think of the, the notion of backup, maybe in the traditional sense, is kind of going away. Because um, I think when people think of backup, they think tape, they think these scenarios. And I think it's, you know, it's changing to more of a, you know, uh, having having various generations on disk, so you, you yeah. have the concept of you know uh, yeah, yeah. being near, able to go back in time, but near real time recovery, yeah. the time machine for the enterprise. Is yeah, yeah. We talk we when we talk to customers, it's usually around the areas of application data protection or a service data protection, um, and then long term preservation of assets as opposed to backup and archive, right? So there, because yeah. they have a very different business processes around them, and then you can apply different technologies to the two of them. So, um, in some some technologies are appropriate for one, some are appropriate for the others. So we're you know we're seeing a lot of customers really focus on day one of how I'm going to protect that data, how I'm going to make data protection uh, an automatic part of the infrastructure, uh, so I don't have to have separate backup teams, yeah. separate you know specific processes. So this whole area of things being sort of automatically protected as part of the infrastructure is. Uh, it's definitely where the, a lot of well, people are going. I think that's a really important point. I mean, data protection has historically been a bolt-on, right? Oh, oh yeah, we got to protect the data. Yeah. Yep. And so you're saying that you're finally seeing customers integrate data protection as part of the fundamental solution. Absolutely. The two things. So the two things that now I'm seeing from a fundamental part of the initial solution build out is data protections built in, right? So you're seeing the techniques of snapshot and replication being melded with you know backup techniques like policy management, indexing, and all that kind of yeah. stuff, right? And then the other uh, sort of conversation we're having with people who uh, put infrastructure in place is how am I going to get off this in five years, five to seven years, right? So because the amount, the size of the data sets are becoming so big that replicating data, data migrations, migrating your backup data are yeah. you know, they're difficult. They're difficult tasks. So people are doing a lot more planning ahead to understand. How am I going to protect this data now, right, from a different set of scenarios, and how am I going to sort of do some hardware lifecycle management from an infrastructure standpoint underneath that data as I go into the future? Yeah. Are you a data protector customer? Or do you use not not currently, although we are, you know, we are looking at it for sure. Yeah, uh, today we're actually net backup. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's you know, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat, but yeah. that's still not in your group, is it? Nope, <laughs> not <laughs> Meg. Just make it. I mean, I've been saying this for a decade. The data protector should be a part of the storage solution. Yeah. I mean, it's anyway. We work with them every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, I know. You guys got a tight yeah. relationship. Yeah, and, you know, blah blah blah. Just don't get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> Do get paid for it. That's good. Okay, well, that's a, that's a start. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, what's going on at the show this year with with you? Oh, lots of stuff at the show. So obviously, you you heard about Flash, right? Yeah, we've heard a lot of flash. <laughs> flash is fast. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Um, Smoking fast. Yeah. So there's yeah. a, in, in, there, it's funny. There's a lot of implications to flash, even on data protection, right? So this is a big area for us. Obviously, it's huge in the market. Um, the media and the speed and what flash brings to the table allows you to do some different things from a data protection standpoint as well, right? So this concept of copy data management, you've heard this in terms of now I can take copies of databases, copies of data sets serve them up to UAT, test development environments, so you, you know, your speed of development by having access to copies of that, you know, of that original production data set um, is being enabled by media like Flash. So Flash, you can do lots of random I.O. You can, with, with modern architectures like 3PAR, for example, it's multi-tenant, right? You have quality of service on there. So now where in the past you'd have to clone a number of data sets, copy them off, restore them from backups for the purposes of having a you know a test data set. Now you can run all that on the same infrastructure. So Flash is great from a performance standpoint for you know speeding up your transactions, speeding up your database, your workflow, but there's a lot of other things that it allows us to do to help the overall speed of development, which is kind of cool. So the copy data management thing's interesting. I mean yeah. So Actifio is obviously popularizing it, Delphix is another one. Yep. The problem is they want me to rip out or not use my, my three par snapshots and I love my three par snapshots. Yep. I don't want to put in a whole new infrastructure around it. So is there 
I mean, the opportunity, I mean, you got a catalog in, in, in store once, I mean, yep. maybe I could use that somehow, that technology. So that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. So we're taking these techniques that you've had in traditional backup for years, and then things that you have on primary storage, right? Snapshots and replication, but with the, 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 um, with the advantages of Flash, now you're able to do a lot more with it, and bringing those two techniques together, we're doing it with software, we're doing it with sort of extensible protocols and SD, SDKs, on the infrastructure itself, so we're not introducing any sort of sand virtualization techniques or you know inline fiber channel, um, you know type of uh, virtualization technology. We're allowing you to do that as a part of the infrastructure itself. So you know we're combining things like three par with Recovery Manager Central and Store Ones to provide those type of experience. I think the killer app there too is potentially is test dev, right? I mean, if you can take copies that are more current, give it to the especially with Flash, give it to the developers. So they're not working on you know n minus three copies. Absolutely, right? yeah, yeah. And they're way more productive. I don't know, what kind of discussions are you having internally? I mean, how do you service the the developer community? Are they what kind of pressures are they putting on you, Bill? I, you know, it's the, probably the same things you've heard. I mean, you know, agility, speed. I know for us, um, you know, because we're we're big on the cloud journey right now in terms of delivering you know private cloud services for our customers inside Fox. One of the areas we're we're actively really striving for is to do, you know, some deeper integration with some of the dev teams where they've got, you know, kind of closed loop uh, cycles, you know, DevOps type cycles that they're developing with, you know, familiar tooling, which, you know, is in the market that uh, out there, the, the Jenkins, et cetera. Um, you know, my team, we're definitely working on trying to integrate a lot of the automation we're doing around cloud with what they're doing on the test dev side to kind of create a nice, you know, cohesive whole so, you know, rather than delivering just a server to them, we can deliver an entire, you know, build environment and, and tear it down, you know, build it up and tear it down dynamically. So you mentioned your store once customer, talked about RTO being really yep. the primary metric that you're trying to optimize. What do you, so Patrick comes out to California, you know, hits the beach, makes a quick sales call, writes it off. <laughs> um, what, what do you want to know from him? What, what kind of, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. with you though, half the time. No, so, so what kind of dis discussions do you have with with Patrick around where you want to where you want to go? What you want out of the product? What you do know, you want I, the roadmap to look like? Yeah, I think one of the things you know we're as I said before you know we're three par and store once customers, and I think where where we see you know things headed in the future, we'd love to see even deeper integration with. Three par in store once, and you know we were actually having a discussion with my team before this, and one of the things they they threw out there like, hey, why can't we just combine them into one product, yeah. you know? And I know right now they're separate, but sure. you know maybe maybe in the near future, you know the the notion of having this this external device that's separate from three par that you're you know moving to, you know maybe maybe some of that gets melded together. And what does that do for you? It it it, it minimizes the the need to manage another appliance. Absolutely. Right. So it simplifies your. Your infrastructure, tighter integration. Yep. So better reliability and yeah. I mean, you know, we're we're like a lot of uh, technology shops in the sense that uh, we're trying to squeeze you know as much as we can you know with the team that we have in terms of technology and still deliver a lot of services. So you know we're always looking to if we can take two and make it one or you know that kind of scenario for simplification. That's what we want to do. Two and more with less. Yeah. But you no. Know, so let me ask you a question: When you do more with less and you drop money to the CFOs, bottom line. Do they do they carve off? Do you get a lick off that cone? Do they say, <laughs> "Hey, Bill, nice job. Here's yeah. a little. You know, we'll take 20 percent of that savings and give it back uh, to you." Yeah, uh, it's I, it, for us. It's just the uh, you know the slap on the back, the the, the handshake that we did it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you seeing with that? I mean, from with, our with from our pro from our product uh, portfolio standpoint, we're simplifying, right? We want to have. I think we're in a unique position in terms of. We want to be the best storage division inside of HP Enterprise, right? We don't want to be the best storage division standalone, right? So that affords us a lot of experiences for that we can bring to the customer when you bring in, you know, the blades and compute and yeah. networking and storage. I mean, what you see up on stage with OneView and all of our element managers 
you know, it's it doesn't sound sexy at the end of the day, but basically having the same look and feel, the same taxonomy that you use for all of our products is like a huge simplification for customers, not having to, you know, learn new UIs and whatnot. So we have other competitors who, you know, they are bringing seven, 10, 12, you know, different architectures for primary storage to the table, right? We're consolidating that and providing customers the, the ability to, to they can go in a cost optimized, software defined, you know, deployment model. You can have appliances that are tuned and in, in, in high performance. Same look and feel, same CLI, same utility, same data services. So we want choice, but it has to be simple because it's too much. Bill, what do you think about that whole software defined meme? Um, is that the future? Is it, as Patrick sort of implying, sort of the, the, the lower cost, sort the of software only model? What are you guys saying? Yeah, we're, well, we're big believers in software defined. You know, uh, like I said, we're we're kind of in it. Uh, you know, on the whole stack in the sense that mm -hmm. we you know not only have hardware, but we have software with HP. We're also doing a lot uh, with the team around Helion OpenStack right now. And uh, you know, one of the big bets uh, we're making is we think OpenStack's going to be big. We, you know, I know internally when we've talked with uh, the, you know a lot of the development teams, the idea of API defined infrastructure that's more malleable is tremendously exciting. Right. So what are you doing with OpenStack? Well, so right now, we're actually, uh, we're kind of in that, you know, early stages. Chicken tires. Yeah, dev test, out, you yeah. know, trying to trying to get a feel for it, because, you know, one of the things I always say, you know, right now with OpenStack is it's kind of a two-way street. You know, there's the infrastructure part of it that my team has to deliver, but the, the other side of it is really the developers, you know, getting their hands around it, getting a feel for it, you know, maybe even doing some platform as a service with a Cloud Foundry, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and they're really developing for that platform and getting the, the mm -hmm. most out of it. Because, you know, in, in a lot of cases, you know, you're coming from a traditional environment where, you know, uh, you had physical servers, you, you put virtualization on top of it, everybody's kind of used to that, maybe a single VM kind of scenario. But when you move to something like OpenStack, you kind of got to rethink how you approach application building. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, gents, we're out of time. We're going to leave it there. But Patrick, last last word for you. Why HP? Why HP? I think we're, we've got some exciting times ahead of us this year, right? So unlocking some velocity and, and value for, for everyone with HP Enterprise. Um, kind of like just to echo what I said before about, you know, we're a portfolio company that brings a lot of technology services to our customers. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, my bet is that standalone companies that focus on one thing like storage or one thing like network or specifically compute, I, I don't see a path forward for that over time, right? Customers are buying solutions and systems and converged art, you know, infrastructure, how you see this you know, hyper-converged theme, right? HP is one of the few companies that can bring all those elements to our customers as part of the equation. So that, for me, that's why I, I stay here and why we've got such a great technology path forward. Yeah, the 80s and 90s are about disintegration of IT and, and, and creating those silos, and now yep. we're seeing the reintegration. So, Patrick and Bill, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely, your stories. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Good to have you Thanks guys. You. All right, All right. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. <laughs>